But we live in an illusory world. That is that we, and I believe this has been proven quite true through quantum physics, that uh, this world that we live in, this 3D or 4D dimensional uh, world that we experience through our limited senses, uh, is an illusion. That in fact, uh, when you get down to the quantum level, the, the subatomic level of reality, uh, it, it, do, it doesn't behave in any way uh, the way that, that the material reality behaves. And if you, if you were to blow up an atom in, in the size of this building, there would be mostly just space. So, you know, we are made up of atoms uh, and, so, and subatomic particles, electrons, and these electrons behave in ways that, uh, that nothing else that we know of behaves except the supernatural. We find ESP uh, amongst uh, electrons, and we find the most interesting thing that uh, there is no separation uh, at the subatomic uh, level. Everything is one. There's no, no difference between one electron and another. Uh, and they're all encoded with the same information that would allow them to replicate the whole universe, it seems. This is theory, but uh, this is good quantum theory. Uh, no, so, and this is exactly what mystics have been trying to tell us for so many years, that, that the world is an illusion and that the real uh, world and universe is a non-physical. And uh, that's where we come from and that's where we go. Um, and, but most of us uh, are uh, totally unaware of where we came from, uh, why we came here, what we're supposed to do while we're here, uh, what's going to happen when we leave here, and what we're supposed to do when we get there. So we're really like blind people groping around with these feeble little senses to determine what reality is. And if you think about it, the eyes can see very limited spectrum of, uh, of light. The ears can hear very, very limited spectrum of sound. Uh, our taste is very uh, help, uh, practically worthless for determining the nature of reality. Uh, touch is pretty, uh, you know, useless also. Um, uh, we really uh, are like ants crawling on the back of an elephant. We have no idea that we're even on an elephant. Uh, we have to use extraordinary uh, other abilities that we have built into our uh, into ourselves, into our bodies, to really penetrate this illusion and see what is on the other side. And that's what shamanism is all about. The opening of the third eye is the way that shamans and, and psychics are able to transverse our reality and see through the illusion of the physical reality. Uh, people who, the shamans are actually communicating with the consciousness of uh, the DNA molecule. That DNA molecule has consciousness. DNA is an extraordinary mystery. It is so complex that we can barely understand it. Uh, it is uh, a, it has been called a, a code, a text. Uh, uh, parts of the, the, the DNA molecule have been called uh, robots uh, and uh, self-replicating robots. Uh, it is uh, extraordinarily sophisticated and complex. It operates on uh, two different languages. The DNA language, which has four letters, A, C, G, and T. And uh, then the, the language of the, uh, of the um, amino acids, no, the, the proteins, I'm sorry, uh, and there are 20 letters in that language. And the only way that DNA can create life, and of course the same DNA molecule is in every living thing, in every, the cell of every living thing on Earth, it just depends, it, it, the difference is how much code there is in, in that particular uh, life form to create a human or a toad or a oak, oak or whatever. And 
they can't do anything, DNA can't do anything without deciphering, having in, uh, translating the codes from the 20 letters uh, alphabet over here and the four letter alphabet over here. So um, somehow uh, a translator got put in place. And the translator is the, it, our enzymes. And without the enzymes, it wouldn't work at all because the two languages can't communicate with, with each other. So we have two sets of languages. We have the translator mechanism, and that is how uh, this DNA is able to work. Problem with DNA is that from when Francis Crick, uh, who was the co-discoverer of the double helix shape of the, of the DNA molecule, when he uh, studied the history of DNA, he realized that uh, there was a big problem, that DNA had never changed in the 3.8 billion years that DNA has been on this planet because there are fossil back, fossilized bacteria that are exactly like today's bacteria that are 3.8 billion years old. Uh, there is no difference between those bacteria. There has never been any other uh, forms of, back, of uh, DNA found. Uh, and it uh, simply, DNA just simply appeared here about 3.8 billion years ago. So Francis Crick concluded uh, that, um, that this either was done by, ha what did, what happened by chance, as we're told by science, or it didn't. So he ran very sophisticated computer models to try to determine the odds of such a complex organism uh, becoming, uh, uh, putting, get, being put together by accident, say by a lightning bolt or by just chemical reactions. And he discovered that the odds of that happening were, were greater than uh, the number of all the atoms in the universe. So he concluded wisely that you could, we could rule out DNA as being an accidental thing. So then uh, the question is, okay, where did it come from? If it didn't uh, evolve here, and if it didn't, wasn't created by accident, where did it come from? And he created the theory of di directed panspermia, which merely says that DNA was sent here by higher intelligence long, long time ago and that life on Earth was seeded uh, from uh, other life forms elsewhere in the universe. Now, uh, since that time, uh, by the way, it's also known that uh, while he was trying to understand the, the, the form, form uh, the DNA took, uh, he took uh, LSD to open his mind to uh, the, to understand such things. So um, he was also exploring in shamanic ways. But um, so we have now NASA who has twice announced that uh, DNA comes from outer space. The first time was with the Mars meteorite where they found um, nanobacteria, fossilized nanobacteria. That was pretty much poo-pooed by the scientific community. And then um, in August of uh, 04, they found another meteor uh, that uh, they said this one was from Europe, the other one was from the, I think, the Antarctic. And they found uh, the same thing, but much more convincing uh, fossilized bacteria and made another big press conference saying that uh, they found fossilized bacteria on another meteor, but this one they don't know where it came from. Uh, God knows it could have been flying through space for a billion years. So we do know that DNA exists, and the, the bacteria that they found uh, is exactly the, like the bacteria that you find here on Earth, uh, with the ex exception that it has uh, different uh, isotopic readings that you do not find on Earth. So definitely alien DNA. NASA is telling this. Dr. Francis Crick, Nobel laureate, told us this in his book, Life Itself. You know, I think it's about time that we recognize that um, where or our origins are from, and they're not from here. Uh, we're all from out there someplace. And if DNA 
exists elsewhere, then uh, there is definitely some form of life out there waiting for us to be, to, for us to discover, except that I think they discovered us.